So how does Jesus address his followers? Stick around for a few minutes and we might get the answer to that question from the passage we looked at this past Sunday. My name is David Miller and I'm the pastor of membership here at McGregor and this is Beyond the Notes. One of the points that I made in my sermon this past Sunday was that for those who follow Jesus, he calls us his friends. We're not just making that up. We're actually getting that from John 15, verses 14 and 15, two of the verses we looked at on Sunday. Jesus says this in those verses, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. So the answer to the question, how does Jesus address those who follow him, is as his friends. Theologian A.T. Robertson calls this statement a permanent state of new dignity for the disciples. I just love that. There are certain people that Jesus calls his friends, and it's only those that he saves. And the assumption about the friends of Jesus is that his friends are those who do what he commands them to do. So that phrase, if you do what I command you, is not about earning your salvation. We know that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. But Jesus is simply truthfully stating an observable fact about those who follow Christ. Pastor Russell made a similar point two Sundays ago when he summed up the first part of John 15 by saying... Those who are Christ followers follow Christ. It's not much harder than that. Jesus only calls saved people his friends because by his grace, we end up doing what he commands us to do. Someone who does what Jesus commands is his friends. And someone who does not do what Jesus commands them to do is not his friend. And that's true because salvation in Christ is not only always permanent, But salvation in Christ is always transformative, which means it does something. Salvation changes us and God produces obedience in those who belong to Christ so that God might get the glory and it might be evident that we belong to Christ. So after sharing this message on Sunday, I had a really good question asked of me by two different people. Same question. And uh, the question that they had is this, if Jesus only calls those who are truly saved his friends, then what about Judas? Wouldn't Judas have been included in that group that Jesus addressed that night? And I just absolutely love the question because the, the implications of it are important because, see, there are some professing Christians today that would believe that Judas was a Christian. I'm not in that camp. I don't believe he was truly saved. And I think there are several indications in Scripture that make that clear. But if he was, then it would be a problem then if Jesus called Judas a friend in John 15, wouldn't it? But he didn't. How do we know that? Well, see, John 13 through John 17, those chapters, that's one long conversation that Jesus has with the disciples. And it began in the upper room, but eventually that conversation moves to the Garden of Gethsemane. And this moment where Jesus calls the disciples his friends in John 15 is during that walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. And by that time, Judas had already left. We know that from John 13. We know that's the point where Judas left the rest of the disciples and Jesus. Let me read it to you in verses 21 through 30 in John 13. The Bible says, After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, that was John, by the way, uh, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, again, that's John, 
leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that Judas, uh, because he had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he, meaning Judas, immediately went out, and it was night. So right here in John 13, Judas leaves, and he does not reappear again in the narrative of John until John 18, when he shows up with the guards to betray Judas with a kiss in order to have Jesus arrested. So if we follow the chronology accurately, that means in John 15, when Jesus calls his disciples friends, he's only speaking to the 11 disciples and Judas was not there. But if you're a really, really astute reader of the Bible, you may say, okay, David, I get all about John's gospel. I get that. I understand that. Judas wasn't there when Ju Jesus called the 11 his friends. But in Matthew 26, 50, Jesus does call Judas friend, and he does so right after Judas betrays him with a quick, uh, kiss, to which I'd say you're correct. Verse 50 reads like this from the ESV. Verse 50 of Matthew 26 from the ESV, Jesus said to him, referring to Judas, Jesus said to him, friend, do what you came to do. Then they, referring to the guards, then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. So in Matthew's account, it seems that after Judas rejoins them in the garden, Jesus and the other disciples, Jesus calls Judas friend. And that would seem to cast doubt on the premise that Jesus calls only those who follow him his friends. Either that or it means that Jesus, Judas is a Christian, right? But no, here's the kicker. There are two different words in the Greek language that are used for John, uh, that are used in John 15 and in Matthew 26. And yet both of those words gets translated into English, friend. As I mentioned on Sunday in the John passage, the Greek word there means beloved one, uh, and it comes from the root word of the, uh, uh, the of the, it comes from the root of the Greek word philos, which is brotherly love. Philadelphia is, is where that name comes from. Uh, a very tight familial love for one another. It's an endearing term that speaks of a very close relationship. That's John 15. In Matthew 26, the Greek word there is hetairos, and it refers to somebody that simply joins in with you for a particular activity. It's a functional relationship. That's what it is, not an endearing one and not an enduring relationship. And that's how Jesus addresses Judas in the garden when he says, friend, do what you came to do. Because Judas most certainly had a functional relationship with Jesus. It was not a tight familial relationship of love that he had for Jesus. He was using Jesus to get what he wanted, which was money. See, money was his Lord and his master. Jesus was not. So be careful, friends, when someone tells you that they have a relationship with Jesus. You might want to ask them what kind of relationship they have. Because someone who is genuinely saved is a true friend of Jesus. And to quote Steve Brown, you think about that. Well, that wraps up our Beyond the Notes podcast for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to have you subscribe. I mean, all you have to do is click that subscribe button. Uh, and you'll be subscribed to our podcast. Feel free to give us a review as well. We'd love to hear from you and get your feedback. We also have other podcasts too, besides Beyond the Notes. So you can hop over to mcgregorpodcast.com, find out all about what else we have to offer. And if this episode encouraged you, share it with somebody today. Now, if you want to be ready for next Sunday's sermon, then we will be continuing in John 15. We'll pick up in verse 17 and go all the way through verse 27 and finish out the chapter. So 
read ahead and we'll see you on the next Lord's Day. Have a great week.